Ross and Vary are from Port Glasgow. For the couple, it's an exciting but nervous time as they prepare for the arrival of their first baby, who's expected in just seven weeks. I don't think it really felt real for ages and ages because we had two miscarriages. So once this pregnancy was going quite well, we just felt um, we wanted to start getting everything done as quickly as possible. Sure. The first time we thought, that's it, nine months, it's going to be a baby. We never thought anything was going to happen in between now and then. But and then we had the miscarriage and we kind of wisened up a wee bit to say it's not going to be, it's not, it's not going to be plain sailing. We wonder how hard it should be to just have a baby. With this baby, things had been going well until they went for their 30-week checkup. We came home from the first scan and they told us there was definitely a problem and um, that she was showing signs of heart failure and just really awful. Well, baby was certainly showing signs of quite severe heart failure while the baby was in utero, so we have to think if the situation had progressed that the baby would have possibly died in, inside the womb. Doctors discovered that there was fluid building up in the baby's chest, putting pressure on the heart and lungs. So under ultrasound guidance, we've placed a needle through Fari's tummy into the baby's chest. And uh, while the needle's in place, we feed what's called a shunt or a stent, a little plastic uh, curled up tube that sits inside the chest and drains from the baby's chest out to the amniotic fluid. So we've really drained off some of the fluid and allowed it to continually drain with the shunt being left in place. I, feel, I just feel as if it's an absolute shame that we've got so far and now she's got a wee problem. And it could potentially be serious, we still don't know. We've been through all so much now that um, we could probably get through anything really. It's just a world of worry from now until we have two and that's it, no more. Right now, we'd just be grateful for one. Mm. Mm, that, that'll be enough. <laughs> you know the routine? <laughs> a regular now? Yeah, you're a regular, absolutely. It's been just over two weeks since the life saving shunt was fitted. Now they have to undergo another scan to find out if the operation has been a success. It's a nice heartbeat there. Baby's heart thumping away. Yeah. And you see the lung that's expanded really nicely. And here's the, the little shunt, the plastic tube. Still inside baby's chest. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Okay. There's still some fluid around. So overall, she's looking good. Looking really good. You worry up until the scan and then when you have the good news you get a couple of days of feeling non -worry, happy yeah. and, and relieved and then you get you start to think about the next week and the anxiety comes back in again so it's five in the morning seven hours ago Vari started experiencing contractions and the couple raced to the hospital examinations found their baby was breech this, coupled with the earlier complications, mean that Vary will have to undergo an emergency caesarean. The baby is five weeks premature and Dr Cameron has rushed from his bed to carry out the C-section. For a couple who have experienced tragedy before, it's a very tense time. Agonisingly, Ross can only catch a glimpse of their newborn, as straight away she has to be put in the care of the paediatric team. She's breathing by herself, it's just a little bit irregular, so we're just mm -hmm. going to see how she goes over the next few minutes and decide whether we need to put a tube down into her lungs and help her with her breathing, but at the moment she's doing it well. But Olivia is tiring and the doctors decide to fit a ventilator tube to help her breathing. 
At long last, Vary gets a chance to see their new baby daughter. The paediatric team want to keep Olivia under close observation, so they take her down to the neonatal intensive care unit. And they'll decide whether she needs any other drainage of the fluid in her lungs or whether we'll just leave the, the tube in that we've put in already. We'll just uh, take it hour by hour and see what happens. For the anxious new parents, separated from their child so soon, it's agony. She's born. I am um, quarter to five. Oh, is it? No, quarter to six she was born. The baby's doing okay. She came out and she was breathing pretty much on her own. But they're helping her, they're helping her breathe now because she needs a bit of help breathing. So they took her away pretty much right away. Olivia has just been born by emergency caesarean section and is now in the capable hands of Dr Judith Simpson and her neonatal team. She's probably as stable as we could have hoped given the fact that she's had um, fluid around her lungs inside the womb and that she's needed to have that drained off not once but twice before she was actually born. So I'm pleasantly surprised how stable and how well she is at the moment. We're just going to get her x-rayed and make a decision about whether we need to put more drains in to drain off more fluid now that she's been delivered. The x-ray results show that there is still some fluid in Olivia's lungs. There's a space between your lung and your chest wall. That space has a tiny film of fluid in it, but sometimes more fluid collects there and it squashes the lung and it makes the work of breathing difficult. So what we're going to do is put a tube pretty much the size of a straw into that space and we're going to try and drain some of that fluid out. With Vare still recovering upstairs, new dad Ross grabs some precious moments with his daughter. It's heartbreaking for the new mum, but whilst baby Olivia has been cared for, Vare still can't be with her. She's breathing on her own, but with a little help from that, finally. Yeah. In the neonatal intensive care department, they carefully insert the new chest drain. With the procedure completed, Vari can at long last be reunited with her baby. For now, this is as close as the new mum can get to her daughter until she comes off the ventilator. It's a day after the birth. Olivia is still having the fluid drained from her lungs and is also being treated for jaundice. With the baby under constant care, Vary has still not been able to hold her daughter. I've been up to see her a couple of times. Um, it's quite hard because you're on the postnatal ward and everyone, everyone else has got their babies with them, sort of thing. Vary's wait may be coming to an end, as there has been some good progress overnight. She came off the ventilator about midnight and she managed to breathe on her own completely since then. Um, she now is having a tiny wee bit of oxygen, but nothing, nothing great. Um, doctors are really pleased with her progress. You can always picture just having her at home and being able to pick her up out of a basket and kind of normal things. So when I feel as if I'm scared to touch her just in case she doesn't like it and stops breathing, <laughs> you know, it's horrible. Would you like to have a cuddle? How would you like to? Yeah. That's okay. So 30 hours after she was born, baby and mother are together and well. She's like any other baby only. And she's. Me. <laughs> Good girl.